away Can't take them on my own, my own Oh, I'm not the one you know, you know I have killed a man and all I know is I Hey YouTubers, how's it going? Today I thought I'd make an update video on the venomous fish tank uh, that I actually set up probably back in May, I want to say. Um, I made the how to set up a saltwater fish tank video, and this is an update on that exact tank. Um, I want to say it probably took about a month total for the tank to cycle. Uh, it took a fair amount of time, but a month is about average for uh, most saltwater tanks to cycle. There are uh, modifications and additions to the tank that were not explained in the video. Um, for example, I added some more live rock to the tank. Um, this was live rock that was taken from one of my previous tanks that I had taken down. Um, it had more biological material to it. It had more bacteria to it. It helped kind of speed up the cycle a little bit. Uh, so it's not like it was anything too much of a cheat. It just sped up a little bit more to get more um, bacteria going in there. Um, on top of that, I do have over here, it's a Tetra Whisper 10 gallon filter. Um, the reason I have that is because it contains Pyrogen. Um, it's a product by Seachem. It does a really nice job at keeping the water clear. On top of that, it's supposed to um, help with taking out ammonia, nitrite, and nitrates inside your aquarium. I haven't really seen a whole lot of that. I want to say keeping the water crystal clear as it is, doing a really good job. Otherwise, don't think it really has much of a handle on nitrates. Um, I have one little container used of it. It's about 250 milliliters, which is supposed to treat up to 200 gallons. Um, and that's not a whole lot of you think about it. The little container is a small, it's just a really small kind of tall container. I wish I had it that I, um, I but it's downstairs. I'm too lazy for it. Um, otherwise, that's the only other thing that's added to the tank. I have a little bit in the uh, canister filter, and I have a little bit in the Tetra Whisper filter. So it keeps the water really, really clear, as you can see in the video. On top of that, I'm going to be adding some more... Ooh, I'm going to be adding some more LED lighting to the tank. I'm going to be working on coral. I'm going to make this a reef tank. Um, I had an LED show up about two days ago, but I bumped it during a water change and it fell in, and I'm waiting on a new driver to um, solder into that previous one. So, unfortunately, i got to wait a little bit extra. I have another light bulb that's supposed to show up hopefully tomorrow, but we'll see. Um, one's going to have more blue, and one's going to have a mix of the blue and white. So, um, Other than that, let's take a look at what we got. Alright, so as you can see, a little bit more of a closer view, the tank is very, very clear, and it's been like this since May. Um, I haven't really had any issues as far as cloudiness goes. Um, what I have noticed is algae growth is starting on the rocks, which makes sense with pure white rocks being in front of a window, um, and the LED light that I do have on top of it, which isn't very high powered, it's more of a low power, low quality um, LED just to light up the tank. Um, you're obviously going to get some algae growth. It's not a whole lot. It's not very bad. There's none of it on the glass. There's none of it um, on the sides at all. It's just on the rock, which makes sense because it's the whitest part of the tank. It's going to absorb more of the light and it's going to grow more of the algae on it. So, um, Something I did kind of slack on was water changes. My nitrate spiked up to 80. Um, didn't cause any issues with any of the tank mates. I really just noticed it about two weeks ago, I want to say. Um, so... The reason I was doing that is because if I'm going to be adding coral to the tank, i got to make sure that my nitrates are beyond low. Did all the water changes. They should be back down to 10, I want to say, which is still kind of high. I'll probably do another water change later on. Um, you don't want to be doing a whole lot of water changes with high nitrates. You want to do maybe 50% of the most. Let it sit. See how it is the next day. Um, obviously, if your fish are doing fine, you do a 50% water change. Um, it's going to have the amount of nitrates in your tank so you don't have to worry about the fish stressing out even more because there's still nitrates in the tank. They were already there. Your fish are living in that. So uh, it's just a matter of slowly taking that out without stressing out the fish too much. So um, in the tank we have a violet and lionfish, or a volition, which I've heard them be called before. Um, he's probably about double the size of what he was when he first went into the tank. He was one of the first additions to the tank. Um, eats freeze-dried krill and anything else that hits the water. So very cool. Yes, they get large. I know this is not a permanent home for him. Um, violin and lionfish get very, very big, so not recommended for most venomous fish tank keepers unless you were looking for at least a 75 gallon aquarium. Obviously, large would be better. Um, on top of that, I have the Caribbean stonefish, which was in a feeding video actually with this guy um, when he first arrived. So, um, <clears throat> he's also eating pellets, freeze dried krill, and anything else that goes past him. Does not really care. <laughs> um, we also have a dwarf fuzzy lionfish. Uh, he's also feeding on freeze-dried krill. Very cool coloration. It's actually one of my favorite lionfish just based on the coloration of them. 
and he will get a little bit bigger too. Um, what else we got in here? We've got some Nasaria snails and one margarita snail in there. Otherwise, back there is a toadfish. It is an orange toadfish, and the downside to it is, um, you can kind of tell. You can see how his eyes a little bit clouded on the opposite side, and he's got a little bit of a brown mark on top of his head. Um, during feeding, someone made the mistake of flying out of his hole in front of the scorpion fish just as the scorpion was going after a ghost shrimp that I had let loose because it was after the, uh, I was trying to feed the Fu Manchu lionfish that's in here and uh, unfortunately the scorpion got a hold of it and the lionfish or the, yeah, the lionfish or toadfish at the same time. So he's got a little mark on his head and a little mark on his eye but they should heal up just fine and I don't expect it to be a long term thing where he's going to be uh, blind or anything so he's got a spot back there that he's dug out anything that you see in the back where it's all pushed up a little bit that's all because of him so otherwise he's been doing fine he's eating pellets really anything that goes past him and he's one of the newer additions as of about three weeks ago so um, and then as I said I've got a Fu Manchu who's hiding back there I don't think I can draw him out by tapping the water a little bit. I feed him uh, ghost shrimp. He doesn't take freeze dried krill. He used to take freeze dried krill, uh, but no longer does. And he's taken some interest. Must have just woke him up. Really cool coloration for a dwarf lionfish. This is the smallest species of lion, I want to believe. Um, I think you're looking at about five inches on average. It's going to be the largest you're going to see. Bright red coloration. They get the Fu Manchu name because of the mustache kind of look that they have uh, with their appendages on their mouth there. Otherwise, very cool lionfish. The only downside is if you're going to keep a lionfish, be prepared for the ones that refuse to take anything other than live. Um, I do not recommend fish just because you can have all sorts of different issues with feeders um, and guppies go ahead I guess there's not really a whole lot of issues that ever from guppies but they're just kind of small um, so large ghost shrimp is what I'm recommended and like I said I hand feed this guy it comes out to the top I gotta make sure that he's hand fed just because um, with the violin and lionfish the dwarf the scorpion the toadfish everything that can go after that prey um, faster than he can he's kind of slow when it comes to taking out prey so um, I just gotta make sure that it goes directly to him and nothing else inside of the tank so Otherwise, there's the Tetra Whisper pump. Inside, I've got three stockings stuck together just to keep the little micro beads in there. Um, it's nothing fancy. Ooh, if it would just focus. Um, three stockings stuck together. Obviously cheap. You're looking like, I don't know, was it like a buck or something? 50 cents? Um, works very well other than paying, I think it's like 5 bucks or 13 bucks for a box of the micro bags that they use for Seachem. I don't see a use in that, so I'm using that. I've got three stockings in that one to keep the beads together. I've got the one in the canister filter, which I'll show you right here if I can get this open. There we go. There's the canister filter, just to prove that it's still here and I'm still using it without any issues. Um, I will be dosing the tank, and actually I did dose the tank with uh, magnesium and calcium for coral, but I'll explain that in the future video when I am working with coral. Um, otherwise, that is really about it. I've got no heater on the aquarium because the room stays about God, 78 to 80 degrees. So the water is probably about 2 degrees higher than that. So, well, I take the back. It's probably about, on average, I want to say it's going to be about 76 in here. Um, it gets colder about 60, 68 maybe. So usually you're looking at, you know, somewhere between 70 and 80 degrees. So it's not too not too bad and it gets pretty hot up here sometimes during the summer so you're looking at about maybe 78 degrees so but otherwise yeah that is the venomous fish tank um, I'll keep you guys updated when it comes to coral uh, there is life growing inside of the tank I'm having random feather dusters pop out this one's actually a pretty good sized he's kinda closed up I added some fresh water to the tank just to top it off but um, that's really about it and for those of you who aren't familiar with topping off aquariums um, you're just taking fresh water and adding it directly to the tank um, you don't really have to do anything as far as doing water changes on that because as the water um, evaporates it leaves a good majority of the salt in the aquarium because salt does not evaporate as quick as water does so just adding regular fresh water to the tank to top it off will not hurt anything if anything it's going to help you out in the long run because your salt level will increase as time goes on and you don't add fresh water um, so unless you're going to do water change on it and take out the salts and then um, add 
the same amount or the proper level that you want for your salt into the tank by all means but otherwise just topping it off will do fine so but that is the venomous fish tank i hope you guys enjoyed the video and i will talk to you all next time don't want to call you in the night time don't want to give you all my pieces don't want to hand you all my trouble don't want to give you all my demons you'll have to watch me struggle from several rooms